Welcome back. Super excited. In this brief lecture, I'm going to talk about what is DevOps best practice or practices. So by definition, a best practice of any kind is a method or technique that has been generally accepted as superior to any alternatives because it produces results that are superior to those achieved by other means or because it has become a standard way of doing things. So two things about best practice, right? So it's a generally accepted principle by means of its superiority to any alternatives. And the reason why, because it produces results that are superior to those achieved by other means of doing things. And the other part of a best practice is that it has become a standard way of doing things. I tend to inclined towards the first part right it produces results so any practice that produces concrete results or efficient results effective results is actually a best practice that one should follow so is it really a myth or is it something that we can actually implement in our services or products or our systems or processes Think of this, whenever you're developing software, because I'm going to relate this to, of course, the DevOps and enterprise scalable applications, right? Not the monolithic applications, but we're talking about the enterprise in perspective of enterprise app development. So in that perspective, is best practice really a myth or is it something that can be implemented? In my experience of managing large scale projects within DevOps environment, it's actually if you were to follow the best practices, it works. It gives you concrete results. So it's not really a myth. It's not really a term or a framework that we just talk about in meetings, right? It is something that you can actually pin down, write them down, and then just start to follow. And that's really determines the outcome or the results. And you'll be surprised to see that several developers, project managers, architects, enterprise architects, solution developers, this talk about, you know, best practices, but essentially when it comes to doing, they tend to kind of shy away. So yes, it's not a myth. It's something that you can actually write down, create a plan, and then start to follow. So what DevOps is, right? Let's talk about just briefly. DevOps is really a framework or a movement, as many people would like to call it. So there's no certificate role, set of tools, or perspective process, right? So it's, it's really a framework. It's a step-by-step -step process by combining the dev and the operations into one coherent department, if you will, or a framework, right? So what this does is it's really a reaction to poor communication. So the DevOps itself, the movement or the framework, came about due to the reaction to poor communication among who? Among developers and operation teams and the teams that are spread out into multiple locations. So that's one of the reasons why we see DevOps coming up and growing exponentially. The second aspect is about creating visibility between Dev and Ops. And now you're bringing both of these teams, so to speak, in one room, right? And they can communicate, they can work, they can assign tasks and view other tasks in a single environment. Third, about the symbiotic relationship between dev and ops, like I mentioned. So it's now intertwined, right? So both dev, developers, and operation folks are now working coherently together. Cross-functional teams over organizational silos is really what brought DevOps into place. And it's also about creating self-service infrastructure for teams knowing that good software doesn't end with just development and release because these days you have versions of app development or versions of software coming up right so even though you deliver something to the customer but really it's knowing that good software doesn't really end there right because you need to revise or revise or create revisions of the software maybe add new aspects to that particular enterprise software and also ensuring a continual feedback loop and that's really what made DevOps, right, come about, is it provides a continuous feedback loop between development and operations. 
And of course, lastly, something you can do without doing agile development. And we talked about waterfall and agile concepts. So in essence, just briefly to run through the waterfall to agile approach as step one, then we have the lean to continuous integration, continuous delivery, agile to lean, and then continuous delivery to continuous deployment to operations. So all of these areas, again, leaning from waterfall to agile, agile to lean, and then lean to continuous delivery. Really, DevOps today goes beyond just developers, system admins, architects, and infrastructure. It's about dev, ops, agile, cloud, open source, customers, business, everything. So it's really a formulation of the entire framework from start to finish. And the idea is that we need one coherent continuous improvement delivery of the software app itself. Just briefly, the DevOps lifecycle, I've covered this in previous lectures, but just again, just to give you an idea, the DevOps lifecycle is from, it encompasses, right, the testing, the source code management, the continuous integration, and then unit testing, the binary uploads, and then deployment, and so on. So you push code, you fetch the changes, you run the tests, you build artifacts, you store those artifacts, you provision the environment, deploy your build, run some tests, and then move into production. So it spans, DevOps spans across the entire delivery pipeline. And of course, we need tools, right, to actually go through this entire process of your enterprise scalable app development. So which tool to use? Of course, there's several out there that you can use, right? There's service now to start from the initiation phase then there's app development phase and you have several tools like visual studio ibm rtc and so on you have eclipse then you move into the test and acceptance phase you have a bunch of tools like aws docker and so on and then of course into production you may have other tools like chef puppet sap and host of other tools so as we move forward, as we combine the dev and operations, of course, you need a platform, you need a tool to actually take your entire development processes and then put them in one place so you can actually follow through the continuous integration and the continuous delivery for the pipeline. And I'm going to talk about what these tools are, of course, specifically to GitLab as a concurrent or running a concurrent DevOps, right? The entire lifecycle can run into this one tool. So here's the conclusion. We are going to take a look at the best practices moving forward, right? So I'm going to demonstrate and also talk about what those practices are and how you should follow those practices to gain efficient outcomes. So if you're new into the DevOps field or you're an existing part of the DevOps environment, this course will help you understand not only the best practices, what those are, but also to implement those practices so that within your own projects, you can create some efficient processes. So we're going to take a look at GitLab along the way. So I'm going to demonstrate this particular software briefly as we go along so that we can have a reference point, right, as DevOps practices, not just all theory, but I'll, we'll take a look at how GitLab actually uses the entire DevOps cycle to produce some efficient results. So I hope this helps. Take a look at these concepts, practice, and let's move to the next lesson.